안녕하세요. You are going to learn how to put can or be able to in the past tense and the future tense in this video. Let's go. Let's make sentences which mean you could do something in the past. I could understand what that woman said. Let's rearrange the words. The entire what that woman said is the object of the verb understand. So you put the subject I first and then put the objective clause what that woman said next. But you have to rearrange the words in the clause too. We told you that you should think that that woman said part modifies what. So the subject of the clause that woman comes first and the verb of the clause said comes next. And what comes at the end of the clause. So what becomes the actual object of the verb understand. Are you okay with this? And understand could comes at the end of the sentence. I, that woman said what? Understand could. Let's not mention the subject I. Yes, of course you can mention it if it's necessary. It's up to you. That woman said what? Let's say the woman is not in your sight, but you and the listener both know who you are talking about. So let's use the determiner 그, 그, and woman, 여자, and the subject particle 가 that we normally use to for the subject of the clause. 그 여자가, 그 여자가, said what? The basic form of the verb say is 말하다. 말하 is the stem. In order to turn it into the verb clause modifier in the past tense, you add final 느 consonant to the stem. 말한, 말한. And use one of the representative nouns which means a thing. 것, 말한 것, 말한 것. 말한 것. That woman said what? 그 여자가 말한 것. 그 여자가 말한 것. Let's add the object particle 을. Because you can say that the entire clause is the subject or what is the subject of the main verb understand. 그 여자가 말한 것 을. 그 여자가 말한 것을. 그 여자가 말한 것을. Understand could. It's nothing. Listen carefully. The basic form of the verb understand is 이해하다. 이해하 is the stem. If you add final 르 consonant and 수 있다 to the stem, it will mean you have an ability to understand. In order to put it in the past tense, you add 얻어요 to the stem of 있다. 이해할 수 있었어요. 이해할 수 있었어요. 이해할 수 있었어요 means you could understand in the past. There's nothing difficult, is it? So the entire sentence is going to be 그 여자가 말한 것을 understand could 이해할 수 있었어요. 그 여자가 말한 것을 이해할 수 있었어요. 그 여자가 말한 것을 이해할 수 있었어요. When you actually speak, you can combine 것 and 을 and make 걸 sound. 그 여자가 말한 걸 이해할 수 있었어요. 그 여자가 말한 걸 이해할 수 있었어요. When you're not sure about the nuance of the object particle, you can just get rid of it and use Ko sound, which is the colloquial form of the independent noun, cut. 그 여자가 말한 거 이해할 수 있었어요. 그 여자가 말한 거 이해할 수 있었어요. As we told you, you cannot use 을줄 알다 in the past tense to mean the auxiliary verb can, because it changes its meaning in the past tense. We will not explain about it here. Just remember you don't use 을줄 알다 in the past tense to mean the auxiliary verb can. That's enough for now. Let's see the next sentence. I managed to persuade my father. You use could for general ability. 
But if you are talking about what happened in a particular situation, you use was or were able to or managed to, not could. But in Korean, you don't have to change anything. You don't have to distinguish between them. You can still use 을수 있다, 을수 있었어요. Let's rearrange the words. I, my father, persuade managed to, right? Let's ignore the subject I. My father. My is 제, of course. But you don't have to use it all the time in Korean, especially when the subject I is understood in the sentence. Father is 아버지. 아버지. 아빠 sounds more like daddy. It depends on your preference, but I wouldn't use 아빠 when I'm talking about my father to another person. It's a kind of saving face thing in Korea, but women tend to use 아빠 even when they are talking about him to another person no matter how old they are. I don't think it's a bad thing, just 아버지 sounds more polite and formal as father is in English. Anyway, let's use 아버지 and add the object particle 를 아버지를, 아버지를, persuade managed to. The basic form of the verb persuade is 설득하다. The stem is 설득하, but it's not actually pronounced 설득하 in Korean. It's pronounced 설득하, 설득하. Because the final LU consonant within the words, which have Chinese origin, turns the initial DU, SU, JU consonant in the next block into the double consonant DU, SU, JU. Mm, but you never actually learned about this specific pronunciation rule before because there is no way for you to tell whether the word has a Chinese origin or not. So just think casually now. If you can remember, it would be great, but you don't have to remember this rule now. Anyway, because of the fact that the word 설득 has a Chinese origin, the final 르 consonant that the letter 설 has turns the initial 드 consonant into 드 consonant. So 설득 becomes 설득 first, and you already know that the final 그 consonant combines with the initial h consonant in the next block and make the aspirated sound k. So 설득하다 is actually pronounced 설득하다 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 okay? And the stem is pronounced 설득하 설득하 and let's add a final l consonant and su it plus ot o yo to the stem. 설득할 수 있었어요. 설득할 수 있었어요. 설득할 수 있었어요. I managed to persuade my father. 아버지를 설득할 수 있었어요. 아버지를 설득할 수 있었어요. Let's make a negative sentence in the past tense then. I could not understand what that woman said. The sentence structure is going to be the same. You just need to use the assistant verb, which means cannot, or impossibility at verb, 못. That woman said what? 그 여자가 말한 것을 understand could not. What was the assistant verb, which means cannot? Yes. 을수 없다. You use the final l consonant when the last letter of the stem doesn't have a final consonant. And use 을 sound when the last letter of the stem has a final consonant. The stem of the verb understand in Korean is 이해하. The last letter of the stem ha doesn't have a final consonant. So you add a final l consonant to the stem and 수 없다. 이해할 수 없다. 
we still need to put it in the past tense and turn it into the colloquial form that you can use in a real life conversation. So get rid of the ta sound from opta. And op is the stem of the verb opta, which means not have. In order to put it in the past tense, you need to add the ending ot o yo. You know that. 이해할 수 없어요. Let's take a close look at the 없어요 part. How is it actually pronounced? The final s consonant of the consonant cluster b s moves up to the initial of the next block because the initial of the next block is the round empty consonant u, and the final double consonant s. Moves up to the next block as well. So, according to the sound linking rule, it changes to up so so yo. But according to one of the double consonant sound rules, the initial s consonant after the final b consonant in the former block should turn into the double consonant s sound. So it's actually pronounced. 없었어요. 이해할 수 없었어요. Are you okay with this? 그 여자가 말한 것을 이해할 수 없었어요. 그 여자가 말한 것을 이해할 수 없었어요. Let's use the impossibility adverb 못 this time. You just need to add 못 sound right before the main verb. But you still need to put the main verb in the past tense. The stem is 이해하. But as you know, when the stem has 하 sound at the end, or the basic form has 하다 part, you use 해요 in the present tense and 했어요 in the past tense. We explained very well about how it became 해요 or 했어요 before, so you just need to remember the whole 해요 and 했어요 part. So, 이해했어요. 못 이해했어요. 못 이해했어요. 그 여자가 말한 것을 못 이해했어요. 그 여자가 말한 것을 못 이해했어요. According to the seven final sounds rule, the final s consonant of 못 is actually pronounced d consonant in Korean. And the impossibility at the verb 못 and the predicative part right after it can be read consecutively without a breath break. Since the initial of the first letter of the predicative part is the round empty consonant, u, you can pronounce it 못 이해했어요. 못 이해했어요. 못 이해했어요. With the d sound. 못 이해했어요. Rather than 못 이해했어요. 못 이해했어요. It's also pronounced 못 이해했어요. 못 이해했어요. With n sound. It's from another pronunciation rule. This pronunciation rule is uh, really something, right? But let's not talk about it. 못 이해했어요 would be just fine because you've already learned about it. 이해할 수 없었어요. And 못 이해했어요 sound a little bit different. But you don't have to know that right now. It's too complicated. You just remember that you can use both of them anyway. Let's see the next sentence. I was not able to persuade my father. I, my father, persuade was not able to. My father, 아버지를, persuade was not able to. Nothing difficult here. The stem is 설득하. And you add a final l and su up plus ot o yo. 설득할 수 없었어요. 설득할 수 없었어요. 아버지를 설득할 수 없었어요. 아버지를 설득할 수 없었어요. Yes, of course you can say 아버지를 못 설득했어요. 아버지를 못 설득했어요. Both are correct sentences and everybody can understand what you are talking about exactly. Let's make a sentence which means you will be able to do something in the future. I will be able to come to the party tomorrow. 
Let's rearrange the words. The subject I comes first and then time related word tomorrow comes next. And then the destination of the verb to the party comes next. And then the entire predicated part comes. You put the main verb first and then the assistant verb which means be able to next. And then lastly you put the assistant verb which puts the entire predicated part in the future tense. Before we do that, we'd like to tell you something about the verb come and go in Korean. In English, you use the verb come to talk about movements to the place where the speaker or a listener is. So you use the verb come when someone comes to the place where you are. But you can also use come when you move to the place where the listener is from the listener's point of view. So it is not strange even though you say I'll come to the party in English. However, in Korean, when someone comes to the place where you are or where you will be, you use the verb come. But when the speaker, you, moves to another place, you always use go. Unless you come back to the place where you are now. Clear? So you cannot use the verb come in this sentence because you are the one who moves. You should use the verb go. So the predicated part is going to be Go, be able to, will. I, tomorrow, to the party. Go, be able to, will. Let's not mention the subject I. Tomorrow, 내일, 내일. It's a noun and it's also an adverb in Korean at the same time, just like English. So you don't have to add a particle. To the party. Party is just 파티, 파티 in Korean. We use the learned word party. There's no R sound. It's a destination, so you should add a destination particle, a. Party a. Party a. Go be able to will. The basic form of the verb go is kada. Kada. And ka is the stem. In order to mean be able to, you add a final l consonant and su it. But you need to add will as well, so get rid of the ending ta. It sound of 갈수 it has the final consonant. Therefore, you add 을 sound and 거예요 to mean will. 갈수 있을 거예요. 갈수 있을 거예요. 내일 파티에 갈수 있을 거예요. 내일 파티에 갈수 있을 거예요. It's nothing, right? Let's make a sentence which means you will not be able to do something in the future. I'll not be able to go to the party tomorrow. We told you that in Korean, we don't use the verb come unless the subject comes to the place where the speaker actually is now or where the speaker will be later. So we use the verb go. Let's rearrange the words. I, tomorrow, to the party. Go, not be able to will. Tomorrow, to the party. 내일, 파티에. Go, not be able to will. The basic form of the verb go in Korean is 가다. And 가 is the stem. In order to mean not be able to, you need to add a final l consonant and 수 없다. But the ending 다 is not really used in a real life conversation. So get rid of it and add 을 거예요 to mean will. 갈수 없을 거예요. Let's take a close look at it again and find out how it is actually pronounced. 갈수 We told you that 그, 드, 부, 스, 즈 consonant which is positioned right after the modifier form of final 르 consonant or 을 sound should be pronounced as double consonant 그, 드, 부, 스, 즈 so, 갈수 should be pronounced 갈수, 갈수. And the second final 스 consonant of the consonant cluster 
moves up to the initial U consonant of the next block. So it becomes up sil. But ku du bu su ju consonant right after the final ku tu bu consonant should be pronounced as double consonant ku tu bu su ju again. So up sil is actually pronounced up sil. Kal su up sil. Kal su up sil. Kal su up sil. And this sir sound also has the modifier form of final l consonant. So it also changes the sound of k consonant in the next block into double consonant k sound. So, 갈수 없을 거예요. 갈수 없을 거예요. 갈수 없을 거예요. 내일 파티에 갈수 없을 거예요. I won't be able to come to the party tomorrow. 내일 파티에 갈수 없을 거예요. You can also use the impossibility adverb 못. 내일 파티에 못. And you need to put the main verb in the future tense. 갈 거예요. 못갈 거예요. However, the impossibility adverb 못 has the final s consonant and it's actually pronounced d consonant according to the seven final sounds rule in Korean. And this d consonant affects the k consonant in the initial of the next block and turn it into the double consonant k sound. So 못갈 is actually pronounced 못갈. And this final l consonant is the one which is used for modifier form. Therefore, the initial k consonant of 거예요 turns into k sound again. So the entire predicated part is pronounced 못갈 거예요. 못갈 거예요. 내일 파티에 못갈 거예요. 내일 파티에 못갈 거예요. This impossibility adverb 못 and the assistant verb 을 거예요 are used with the main verb all the time. Therefore, it is not strange to be read as if they are one word. That's why you can apply the pronunciation rules between the words even though there is a space between them. So you normally read them without a breath break. 못갈 거예요. 못갈 거예요. And this 거예요 part is always used with the modifier form of the final l consonant or 을 sound. So 거예요 is always pronounced with the double consonant sound 그 거예요. In this way, you can get familiar with the sound change and maybe you will be able to apply the pronunciation rules without thinking about them. Maybe. Or maybe not. Let's see the next sentence. I will not be able to find your house alone. Let's rearrange the word. I. The position of an adverb is relatively flexible. So let's put the adverb alone first. And then the object, your house. And the entire predicated part, find, not be able to will. I. Let's use 저 this time to emphasize the fact that I alone find your house. Yes, you can add a subject particle, 가, or auxiliary particle, 는. Depends on the nuance you want to express, but let's not use either of them this time. Alone. 혼자. It can be both a noun and adverb in Korean. 혼자. Alone. Your house. It's really hard to find the word for the possessive you are in Korean, right? So let's just ignore it. House is 집. Let's add the object particle 을. 집을. 집을. Find, not be able to will. The basic form of the verb find in Korean is 찾다. 찾 is the stem. Since it has final consonant, you need to add 
ö sound plus su op plus ö koyeyo. Çat ül su op ül koyeyo. Çacır su opsır koyeyo. Çacır su opsır koyeyo. Ço hunca çibül çacır su opsır koyeyo. Ço hunca çibül çacır su opsır koyeyo. Of course, you can use the impossibility adverb mut. 저 혼자 집을 못 찾을 거예요. 저 혼자 집을 못 찾을 거예요. Okay, very good. Okay, this is the end of lesson 7 part 3. You are going to learn how to say should or have to in Korean in the next video. 그럼 다음 비디오에서 만나요. 안녕히 계세요.